Isn't that beautiful? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to this week's episode of the Shamir Shell Project. I am on my way to the Chilterns. I am guiding a couple of groups this weekend and uh, I will be camping out this weekend too. Oh, what was that? Anyway, um, welcome to this episode. This is Thoughts from the Van. As mentioned, I am going up to the Chilterns, specifically the Chiltern Hills, and uh, we are going to be doing two hikes and two different groups. One is a five mile hike and the other is a 7.5 mile hike. And there is a couple of people doing both, which is pretty cool because they're gonna camp out as well. I don't believe it's the same campsite as me, but uh, they will be doing both hikes. So today's topic in the Thoughts from a Van series is about which hike is good for what sort of hiker and more importantly, which hike suits what sort of hiker. So as mentioned, the two hikes, for example, this weekend, one's five miles, one's 7.5 miles. They are both a pretty good distance. They're a decent walk, a decent hike, especially if the terrain and the topography or the geography of the area is changing all the time. And what I mean by that is you could be hiking a few miles and you could be in a woodland flat area and then suddenly you go down a valley come out the other end and you've got a steep 20% incline so it all depends on the type of hike it is the type of route it is the type of trail what's under your foot that matters too so it could be rocky could be rooty could be boggy and muddy it all depends on that so never underestimate the um, the level of a hike in terms of whether it's beginner intermediate or advanced but in my case and as far as my customers are concerned I have created the five mile for example this specific five mile which is great for beginners the 7.5 mile hike that we're going to do is great for beginners but it's also very very good for intermediate hikers and of course it's fantastic for expert advanced hikers because it's just a beautiful place to hike and 7.5 miles is a is a decent hike it's a decent walk it, it's it's good it'll take a, a good amount of time over a day to do that so you know it's about four hours four and a half five hours for some people so it's a decent hike both five miles seven miles ten miles all, all of them are very good hikes it all depends on the guide in, in this case it's me how you map it out what sort of customer you're trying to target and help to get outdoors and get walking and hiking in nature so it all depends on that in terms of the customer or my clients I help them best decipher which hike is good for them based on their um, their level of walking and hiking so for example if you hardly did any walking maybe once a week a couple of miles or twice a week for a mile here and a mile there dog walking or something like that then 
and you've never been out in nature and hiked in the wilderness, then I would say start off with the five mile hike. Experience the five mile hike, see what it takes, and if you enjoy it, and in most cases, yes, people love it, then you can progress onto the six mile hike and then the 7.5 mile hike, and then go even further to the 10, 11 mile hike. Uh, I do have various ones. I have certain ones on my website because I am trying to take out a certain customer base and expose them to nature and the outdoors and the wilderness uh, in sort of our local vicinity. So the five mile hike is great for beginners, great for intermediate hikers. Uh, it's tailored for people, as mentioned, who don't do too much hiking uh, in nature, but perhaps do one or two miles a week, walking to work, commuting, you know, a bit of cycling, uh, maybe walking the dog, that sort of thing. So it's, it's tailored for them. However, this five mile hike does have different underfoot terrain. So it could be rooty, there's rocky areas, there is uh, flat areas, and there's hilly areas. And there's areas in woodlands, which can get a bit boggy during the uh, spring and autumn. And then I've got the 7.5 mile hike, which I'm doing this weekend. So in terms of who goes out on the 7.5 mile, anybody, again, a beginner could do it, an intermediate person would do it, uh, you know, uh, uh, an expert advanced level person would love it. The thing about the 7.5 mile, it's a lot longer, which is obvious, but also it takes up quite a bit of time over the day depending on the group depending on the service the type of hiker I have in place so uh, sometimes in a group we've got hikers who have not done much hiking in a, a little bit not the fittest of people and they may be trailing behind and a bit slower whereas you've got one or two other people who, who are pretty fit and are keeping up in the front of the group so we don't just hike and try and get to the finish in the shortest amount of time it's not a race this is about experience about enjoying about understanding nature educating yourself what's around you and then respecting it and going out and doing it again that's what it's about so the 7.5 mile hike in groups where you've got a mixed level of fitness we would always make sure everyone's in a group if we need to stop we stop and take a breather if we need to keep going, we keep going slower if it's needed. Whatever the case, we tailor, and myself, I tailor, but then the rest of the group has to tailor along with it to the pace of the group. So the 7.5 mile hike this weekend is pretty big hills. There's lots of woodlands, beautiful woodlands, lots of hillsides, a few valleys, and it can get a little bit tiring. It is quite long. Uh, and the weekend is going to be very hot, so it can be a bit draining and tiring. But the experience and the views and just nature, in the nature nature is, just invigorates you, energizes you, revives you. But the 7.5 mile, I would say it's for a sort of person who hikes more than once or twice a week. And if they do once or twice a week, I would say it's for a sort of person who does a good two or three miles per hike or per walk in your neighborhood. So if you're walking the dog, for example, then you're walking them for a good amount of time. Or you might be a, a runner and you run two, three times a week for a good two, three, four, five miles. Um, like I said, beginners can do it. They just need to be a little bit fit. Um, and that's quite important because a 7.5 mile there is a it is quite hilly in certain places and you've got to be quite fit to do it so if you're a hiker or a walker or if you're a walker who would like to go hiking in nature and you do walk two three times a week for a distance of a couple of miles two three miles per per walk uh, I would say this is tailored for you. You'd be pretty fit to do that. Um, you are used to walking. You just have to understand that this 
type of hiking in nature and the wilderness is completely different to hiking in your local neighborhood on tarmac and pave pavements um, so it's a complete different ball game but it's so enjoyable that you forget about how fit you are sometimes and just love the experience and just go for it the one thing to remember when out hiking for me to remember but also for a customer to actually understand is that the weather in the UK especially can change can change from one minute literally to the next of course we have weather apps and weather information that we can gauge before a hike which I normally do uh, I gauge it a few days before I gauge it on the day just to make sure that we're prepared when we go out there but the one thing to remember is that in different weather conditions and different climates depending on your altitude depending on where you are in the woodland for example or things can affect you in terms of the weather so it could be cold and windy to really really hot and draining to raining to the point where everything is muddy and boggy and therefore it takes a lot more time and a lot more energy to to complete hikes so the weather really matters so that's one thing to bear in mind that it might for example be a five mile hike but if the weather is dreadful or dreadful in the sense too hot or just very cold and windy um, it can be a tough hike so it not only matters on the type of trail it is and the type of underfoot uh, ground that you'll be treading on but it also depends a lot on the on the uh, weather conditions so that's something I bear in mind when creating my hikes but it's something that I It's, it's something that I uh, am always looking at gauging even during hikes just to make sure that it's fine most cases it doesn't change within that hike time because um, I have looked at the weather and it's maybe going to be sunny in the afternoon and a little bit of drizzle in the morning so it's not that drastic in terms of changes but it can change especially on hilltops and the top of mountains etc um, and then the other thing is if it's really windy really windy 30 40 50 miles per hour winds do you want to be in a woodland area hiking through a woodland in 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 strong winds probably not so we have to reroute simply because you get branches that fall trees that break and uh, that can be very dangerous so bear in mind your fitness level bear in mind the length of the hike and the underfoot conditions and you have to bear in mind the weather conditions those are three factors that really determine your fulfillment enjoyment of a hike and in my case and a lot of outdoorsy people's cases we don't care we just go out there and we do it of course abide by mother nature's rules such as if it's lashing down with rain with 60 mile per hour winds you have to be careful and you have to know what to do and what not to do so that's important to remember Go for it. so that's just a little recap of what sort of hikes suit what sort of people uh, I have explained a lot more on my website so if you head over to shamirshad.com I'll put it down below shamirshad.com and go to guided trips you will see on there a breakdown of what sort of hikes are suitable for what sort of people in terms of fitness anyway that's what this episode is about if you have any further questions please send me a message on social media on my Instagram or send me an email and I will be more than happy to answer any questions you might have I hope you have a great weekend I hope 
you have a fantastic week and I will see you out and about.